<laughs> All right, so this is Sky Specs. Uh, Danny Ellis, CEO, is going to take us through uh, the dangerous robot. Go <laughs> Thank for you. It. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Danny Ellis. I'm the CEO of Sky Specs. Today, there's a whole new industry taking shape right over our heads. In the next five years, there's going to be tens of thousands of drones in the sky at any given time in the United States alone. In comparison, there's only over 5,000 commercial airliners in the sky. And over 10 years, it's going to be a $98 billion industry. At SkySpecs, we've developed technology that is going to solve one of the biggest problems in drones today and finally enable companies to unlock their aerial workforce. It'll allow farmers to deploy fleets of drones to precisely monitor their crops and apply pesticides. It'll allow inspectors to closely monitor our aging infrastructure and our new infrastructure like this wind turbine so that this inspector can keep his feet safely on the ground and get better data faster than ever before. And eventually, it will even allow for faster, cheaper package delivery, medical supply delivery, and even your late night pizza. Today, drones are flying high in the sky and in wide open spaces, but you don't see them in our cities, our neighborhoods, around our bridges, or around our energy infrastructure. They're very challenging to fly in that up-close airspace, close to obstacles that you see every day. Some companies are even trying to fly in this airspace now, and they are crashing everywhere. These drones do not have eyes and a brain, and they are only as capable as the operator on the ground, and they also require one operator for every drone. <coughs> but SkySpecs is changing that. And today, I'm excited to demonstrate to you the first commercially available obstacle avoidance system for small drones. Our, our product, called Guardian, is a platform agnostic sensor software suite that automatically detects obstacles in the env environment and avoids them. It alters the flight path even if the operator is trying to crash the drone or if a wind gust comes and pushes it toward the obstacle. The safety distance of the drone is adjustable and the sensors on board can be changed for a variety of lighting conditions and environments. This short video here shows our first demonstration using a LiDAR system, which is scanning around and locating my partner, Tom. As he steps closer to the drone, the drone automatically backs away. Now, this video is a good demonstration, but the best way to see it is a live flight demonstration. After this vehicle takes off, I'm going to step close to it, and it will automatically back away from me. So this technology, which can go on this platform or any other platform in the market today, will finally allow people that are not highly trained pilots to use drones. We're going to market by partnering with major in, uh, infrastructure inspection, um, commercial users that want to use drones today. And we've already partnered with our first early adopter, Upwind Solutions. They're a major third party uh, operations and maintenance inspection firm in San Diego, and they cannot wait to be inspecting over you know, 10,000 wind turbines a year using our system. We are also working closely with the National Science Foundation through a phase one SBIR to extend our capabilities and use data such as data from manned and unmanned aircraft in the airspace. So not only will it avoid obstacles near it, it will also avoid other aircraft in the airspace, solving one of the biggest problems the FAA has today. Today we are launching our early adopter program and inviting 20 customers to work with us for 90 days and we, where we will come on site, install Guardian onto their platform or provide them with the platform that you see here so they can start seeing what the capability of drones are gonna give them. We'll provide free upgrades, both hardware and software and work one-on-one -on -one with them to make sure that it is providing everything that they need. It'll last for three months and uh, based on their feedback, we're gonna be providing um, uh, other features that you don't even see on the vehicle today. Our team has been working together for over six years on in intelligent robotics, and we've won multiple business competitions, multiple engineering competitions, and are very passionate about the future of, of robotics. We know that they can improve life far more than what they're doing today, if they can be more intelligent. We're currently working through the RGA Accelerator Program, powered by Techstars in New York City, and cannot wait to bring this technology to you. 
we invite you to come to our booth, see Guardian up close, interact with the drone, and see the future of drones today. Thank you. All right, excellent. So the so the actual product itself is the little little nubbit on top. Correct. I don't know if you can see it anymore. Correct. It you, is. Can you go back to the actual yep. picture of it? I'll go to the the big picture here. Uh, where is she? There he is. It is the uh, the blue piece right now, which is a very early prototype. Um, but we will be working down to scale that down, uh, add other sensors, and equip it onto other drones. Right now, it's on on this platform that you see here. Uh, it's been uh, put on some other custom platforms and uh, you know other uh, platforms that you recognize in the market today. Yeah, what would happen if we all crowded it just immediately? It would land itself. Okay. Um, if you crowd it too fast, yeah, you could uh, you could get too close to it if you come in from all directions. But it is set to land itself. Yeah. So are the drone manufacturers themselves working on this type of technology? <coughs> Presumably it's been an issue for them. I've been around some uh, rookie drone pilots and it hasn't gone well, so <laughs> it must be top of mind for them. Yeah, I mean, we've heard it talked about for years. Uh, we started working in drones in 2009, and uh, it's always been like the next thing on the radar, but we've never seen anybody moving toward it. Um, they're always building the next best system, um, but this is a really challenging problem. We've been working in it. Uh, and actually land, uh, sea, and aerial robotics for a long time. Um, we've just launched it for the, uh, the aerial platforms now. And what makes you think now is the time where the market's going to take off versus uh, a year from now or yeah. two years from now? Yeah, well, the, the regulatory environment in the United States has been challenging, and it's finally starting to open up. Um, there are 11 companies now that have exemptions to fly, and we're working closely with some of them so that not only can they go out and fly, but they can do it safely and they, they can do more with it. Uh, they don't have to be quite as, as worried about the environments that they're flying in. So with the regulatory environment changing and, you know, you see drones all over this entire show, uh, we do think this is the time for them to become more intelligent. So is your uh, module basically controlling every aspect of the flight of the drone or can it interact with other guidance software it, it as well? Is, uh, right now it is interacting with other guidance software. Um, so it sits on top of the existing flight controllers. So as you're flying it, if you mm -hmm. try to crash it into something, it won't let you. Um, it's kind of like running up against an invisible wall in a video game. Okay, and so it's just serving one function, which is obstacle avoidance. Right now, yes. So it can just serve as uh, like some sub-function of the main, right. main software on the drone. Right. It's the first step toward allowing these to fly completely on their own. <laughs> um, if they don't have obstacle avoidance and you program an autonomous flight path and they can't see anything except for its GPS signal, um, it's going to be pretty difficult for it to fly itself. So this is the first step towards us delivering uh, higher autonomous uh, capabilities later. And you're using a regular controller with joysticks. How does it feel to the operator? Because I would, I would think if I'm flying up on top of a tur wind turbine mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I get wind and I don't know where my, where my drone is going, is there, is there a feedback or is it we just assume that you're going you're gonna to go with the flow and just kind of work your way around the, when it tries to avoid stuff? Right now, the only feedback would be on the first person view. It's like view. two pilots would be fighting, like the robot pilot right. and the human pilot. Right. So right now, when you're flying it, you don't even realize the system's taking over. Um, you just feel like there's, you know, you have a little bit less control than you would have, and the only feedback we have right now is on the, the heads-up display um, on the ground. We've talked about some tactile feedback as well, so if you're not looking at the screen, uh, you know when the system is taking over. Um, but so far, everyone that we've had fly it, uh, they hardly even realize that they are, you know, our system's taking over and preventing them from crashing. So I've done a lot of work with the automotive companies, and obviously this is very similar, right? This right. is sort of an anti-brake system. You know, a lot of these cars now installed, you can't get too close to a car. It'll automatically, like, re, you know, make you change lanes, slow down, et cetera. So a couple questions. One, I'm assuming this becomes a reference design at some point, right? Mm -hmm. you're going to get, this is really a proof of concept from the hardware perspective. Right. Is that your plan? Yeah, and our plan is we want, we'd love to license this to the manufacturers and get these sensors built into drones before you buy them. Um, so then we can just bring better software to do more things so that you can deploy a swarm of drones that can fly through buildings, fly around wind turbines, and our software will provide the intelligence for them to do that. Right now, the drones don't come with the sensors, so we do have to build the hardware portion of it. So let me ask you, I mean, you're a small company right now through mm -hmm. the RGA Accelerator, so when you think about any kind of liabilities and assurances that you're giving some of these large commercial partners of avoidance, you know, are you set up to support large companies like this? Um, and also back up what you're doing. Right. I mean, that uh, working through the accelerator is really helping us with that. Um, but that is one of the big questions as we go to market. 
Um, today, uh, because of the regulatory environment, none of these are flying, uh, but that's going to change in the next few months here with our early adopter program. So that is a big question mark for us, um, but that's something we're, uh, we're working through the accelerator to figure out. So what drones does it work with today? Today, DJI 3DR, uh, a custom platform that we built, um, pretty much it, it'll plug into any flight controller. So those are the ones we have put it on, um, but we're working with some uh, other custom platforms uh, from Europe as well um, that we should have it equipped on pretty soon here. But from a physical mounting point of view, does it fit on 3DR and DJI? Like, how does it get attached? So that's, it's going to be dependent on what environment you want to fly in and what sensors you want. So this one you see here, it won't fit on, say, a Phantom because uh -huh. it's too big. We can fit a smaller version of it, and we have fit a smaller version of it on a Phantom before. Um, but that's going to be dependent on what the customer wants to use it for. And uh, if you're flying in, a, in an environment where you need uh, high fidelity data, you're going to need better sensors, usually a bigger platform. All right, super. So that was Sky Specs. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Thanks for flying thank huge you. things near our faces. <laughs> and it was completely safe, too. So there we go.